Last year, I overcommitted myself. And the year before that, and honestly, the year before that too. Setting sky high expectations for yourself can do that. You just get so focused on the benchmarks of your own existence that you forget to take time to slow down and be present in each accomplishment. Life can be like that, especially with the nature of social media these days. To succeed is to contribute a constant stream of relatable, engaging content, regardless of whether you feel inspired to do so. Appeasing the algorithms that potentially determine an income, the possible success of your small brand, or a measure of self determined by likes, comments, and views. It's easy to get lost in it. Creativity doesn't thrive in factory form. Burnout is loosely defined as a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. It occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to meet constant demands. That sounds about right. I've been standing on the cliff edge of burnout for the last two years trying to keep it together. And recently, I fell off that cliff. So much of everything became a chore. The creativity well dried up, and even the most basic of tasks became demanding. While a lot of these symptoms might relate back to my predisposition to depression and anxiety, it came as a shock to the system, as the life and habits I created around filmmaking and photography were always an escape for me. And with burnout, I've started to question that identity. When I got my first camera more than 10 years ago, everything was so fun, fresh, and exciting. I experimented with different styles, captured photos of everything and anything. The mistakes were fun, the accidents happy, and the successes surprising. It was all love and no labor. I worked a normal nine to five, paid my rent, and was happily content taking pictures with my friends on random weekend adventures into the mountains. Looking back now, it truly felt like the good old days. Then in 2016, I got my first 10,000 followers on Instagram, my first brand deal. It was a really novel thing at first. I'm not even sure the term influencer was part of my vocabulary at that point. It was the first time that hints of a career as a photographer started forming in my subconscious. But the weekend adventures kept on. I traveled out of the country for the first time, visited Canada, Iceland, and the Alps, and got a small taste of freedom from my desk job and the world of opportunities out there. And the momentum just kept building and building. Eventually, at the end of 2018, I left my job at Microsoft in Seattle and told myself that I was going to take a chance on being a full-time photographer. It was a now or never mindset and something that I felt that I owed to myself to pursue. If it didn't work out, I'd go back to that reality but it ended up being the best decision I ever made. It's been four years now of making films and photographs full time. I've traveled the world, cultivated a small community of creative friends, worked with brands I never could have dreamed of, and honestly, I've grown so much from the entire experience. It's certainly been a journey I've enjoyed through and through, with many hills and valleys and unexpected turns, and I'm internally grateful for it all but everything in life has a trade-off. Making your creative outlet and purest form of happiness in your desk job comes at a cost. My identity as a creator has consumed every corner of my life for the past four years. And working for yourself is a wonderful and terrifying experience. Some days you're a great boss and other days you're a terrible employee. You can take credit for any successes, but all failure falls on you too. And when your income depends on creative output, the pressure to always produce can be overwhelming. Lately, I haven't been able to escape it. There just doesn't seem like there's anything left in the tank, and all the promises I made to myself a few months ago are starting to fall at the wayside. I'm sure many of you out there have felt this way yourselves from time to time, and I don't need to tell you how sad of a feeling it is. I'm in the throes of it right now. But I know that there's a path to get back to those good old days. And the first step is being honest with myself. I'm making this film to remind myself that it's okay to feel this way and that I'm not alone in this feeling. 
And maybe if you're out there watching, you'll identify with some parts of this and realize you're not alone too. Taking a step back, this past month I've had moments of clarity about myself as a creative that I haven't had in years. Recognizing bad habits that have collected while too distracted by overachievement and slowly making a plan to reverse course and be content with the now. It's easier said than done, certainly, but 1% better is all I'm hoping for each day, and creating this film is part of that path. Also, the season of life is a good reminder to myself that most everything you see online is a highlight reel, and that even though my channel or my Instagram might be a beautiful escape into nature, behind that lens, there's a lot of life that doesn't make the cut. So, here's to getting better and trusting the process. Until next time.